Hello, I'm Barbara Lucas and welcome to The Green Room, a collaboration between Washtenaw County and Ann Arbor's CTN Television. Today, we're honored to have as our guest, Mr. G, AKA Ben Gundersheimer. Ben is perhaps known best as a musician, having won a Latin Grammy for Best Children's Album, numerous Parents' Choice Gold Awards, and Best Children's Albums of the Year by People Magazine, Parents Magazine, and The Washington Post. But he's also a children's book author, including author of this book based on one of his songs, Senorita Mariposa. It has an important environmental message we'll be discussing today. Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Barbara. It's great to be with you. So in doing some background research for the show, I see that you're an avid environmental activist and that you also have a master's degree in elementary education. So why is it that you focus on children for your environmental activism? Well, I mean, to me, it's one of the wonderful things about working for children is by definition, you're actually working across generations. You're working with teachers, you're working with parents, you're working with grandparents. I love working with children because of their, initially just because of their really visceral response to music, which is, as you mentioned, how I started out. But of course, with books as well, they're just so curious and, and open. And, um, you know, to me, they're also obviously the future. And so I want to do all I can to impart values that I think will serve them and serve all of us, meaning not just humans, but other animals that we share the planet with. So I see that you performed at the National Climate Rally in Washington, D.C., um, and that numerous times you've headlined concerts on Capitol Hill as an advocate for Mom's Clean Air Force. What's Mom's Clean Air Force? Mom's Clean Air Force is a fabulous national environmental advocacy group that we've been honored to partner with uh, that lobbies for clean air, clean water for kids. And once a year in the pre-pandemic days, their moms and families from all 50 states would gather on Capitol Hill for a day of advocacy of the representatives. And the morning would kick off with a concert where we would sing our environmentally themed songs and everyone would gather, sort of get everyone fired up. And then everyone would go up and uh, talk to their respective representatives and lobby on behalf of the environment. I guess they have over a million members and the state chapter representative is in Brighton, which is very close to us here. Well, so wonderful. that's exciting. Mm -hmm. So now that we have an idea of the breadth of your work, let's get into the story that we're talking about today, um, Senorita Mariposa. And I came across a lovely video that you have produced that uh, has you reading it. Can we show that now? Oh, absolutely. Great. Señorita Mariposa, tú eres muy hermosa. Señorita Mariposa, tú eres muy hermosa. Te quiero a ti. Hola amigos, welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Mr. G, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. Today's story time is extra special because after I read you my book, I'm going to sing you the rest of the song that inspired it. They are both called Señorita Mariposa, which means Miss Butterfly. Are you ready? Great, let's begin. Today's book is Señorita Mariposa by Ben Gundersheimer. That's me, Mr. G. Little butterfly, you just caught my eye. Little butterfly flying through the sky. Pequeña mariposa, llamaste mi atención. Pequeña mariposa, volando por el cielo. I love to see you in the trees playing with the bumblebees. Your pretty orange wings make me want to sing. Me encanta verte entre los árboles, jugando con los abejorros. Tus bellas alas anaranjadas me inspiran a cantar. Señorita Mariposa, tú eres muy hermosa. Señorita Mariposa, tú eres muy poderosa. Te quiero a ti. Little butterfly, you're so beautiful. Little butterfly, you're so powerful. I love you. It's hard to say goodbye, but I know you have to fly. Es difícil decir adiós, pero sé que tienes que partir. 60 miles or more a day, por más de 60 millas al día. We will see you on your way. Te veremos en tu camino. Can't believe how far you go on your way to Mexico. 
No puedo creer lo lejos que vas en tu camino a México. Over mountains capped with snow, sobre montañas cubiertas de nieve. To the deserts down below, a los desiertos abajo. Then one day a great surprise, there's a flash across the sky. Beating wings warmed by the sun, can't believe how far you've come. Algún día, una gran sorpresa. Hay un destello en el cielo. Las alas calentadas por el sol. No puedo creer cuánto has viajado. Tú eres muy valiente. Tú eres tan fuerte. Tu viaje es un milagro. Te admiro mucho. You're so brave. You're so strong. Your journey is a miracle. I admire you so much. What a bright and brilliant sight. Monarchs fill me with delight. How nice to have a million friends. The butterfly fiesta never ends. Qué espectáculo tan brillante y colorido. Las monarcas me llenan de gozo. Qué bonito tener un millón de compañeros. La fiesta de la mariposa nunca termina. Señorita mariposa, tú eres muy hermosa. Señorita Mariposa, tú eres muy poderosa. Te quiero a ti. Little Butterfly, you're so beautiful. Little Butterfly, you're so powerful. I love you. I hope you all enjoyed learning about monarch butterflies and the extraordinary journey they take each year. To learn more about how to help the butterflies, check out the note in the back of my book. Now, are you ready for the song, Señorita Mariposa? Do you think you could help me sing it? Let's do it. Señorita Mariposa, tú eres muy hermosa. Señorita Mariposa, tú eres muy hermosa. Te quiero a ti. Little butterfly, you just caught my eye. Little butterfly, flying through the sky, I'm so happy. Con tus alas preciosas, cuando te posa en la rosa, your pretty yellow wings, they make me wanna sing. Señorita mariposa, tú eres muy hermosa. Señorita mariposa, tú eres muy hermosa, te quiero a ti. Can't believe how far you go All the way to Mexico Sixty miles or more a day We will see you on your way Señorita Mariposa Tú eres muy hermosa Señorita Mariposa Tú eres muy hermosa Te quiero a ti Little butterfly flying through the sky I'm so happy you're alive Thank you so much for singing along. Come back to read more stories together anytime you'd like or find more books to read yourself at readbrightly.com. Adios! So I really love that story and the illustrations are amazing, just beautiful. Well, thank you. That They were done by a great friend of mine. His name is Marcos Almada Rivero. He's a brilliant artist from Mexico City originally. And uh, we connected uh, for the first time when he did the album art for the album that won the Latin Grammy, an album uh, called Los Animales, The Animals. And so Marcos and I, then we were traveling to perform in Mexico and we actually met in person and developed this great friendship that extends beyond the music. And so when the publishing deal came about, my editor asked if I had anyone in mind who might be a good contender to illustrate the book. So of course I thought of Marcos and she saw his portfolio and happily yeah. chose him because as you, I couldn't agree more. I think his, his, his work is just brilliant and hmm. beautiful. And I guess you travel together to the wintering grounds where the um, monarchs go in the winter. Where is that? Yeah, so th this was very special. So several years ago, I went with Marcos to the mountains of Michoacan, 
okay. which is the wintering grounds, as you say, of the monarch butterflies. And we have actually a little documentary on our website about that trip, but it was oh. a remarkable morning where we rode horses through the forest as the sun came up and um, looking for the butterflies. Uh, and then I noticed that they're in the trees, but all clustered together. And the book represents that. But then when the sun comes up and warms their wings sufficiently, there's a moment where they all take to the sky. And so we were on this mountaintop together with millions of butterflies silently flying around us. It was magical. Oh really my cool. gosh, I'm getting yeah. shivers. Yeah, it was one of the most just transformative and beautiful nature experiences. And to do it with Marcos made it extra special. Oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah. So what are the threats to the wintering grounds? Well, in Michoacan itself, in the state, uh, there's deforestation. So habitat destruction is a major issue in Mexico, but it's also a major issue here in the States and in Canada. So, you know, habitat destruction, climate change, contaminants mm -hmm. along the migratory routes. There's so many threats. And when we think about these little creatures traveling 3000 miles, it's such a remarkable journey, but it's also just very perilous. And yeah, in your book, you say you are muy poderosa. Am I saying that right? Muy poderosa, very powerful. Yes, which yeah. which at first when I read it, I was like, huh, that didn't, I don't think of monarch butterflies right. as powerful. But then when I read your book, you say that they're flying over 60 miles a day. That's amazing, right? How powerful is that? I mean, yeah. And similarly, so you're having this experience. And frankly, this the, the book, as you mentioned, was originally a song. Mm -hmm. And the song was just an appreciation of a beautiful butterfly. So when I went to research the book and transform it into more of a narrative as you need with a children's book, I learned facts like what you just cited, and I couldn't believe it. And so that's, that's how I started to also transform my perspective from them just being beautiful creatures to these remarkable, powerful, mm -hmm. uh, heroic animals. Yeah. And they need a lot of nutrition to do, I guess, of some course. of them go all the way from the Northeast of the United States, all the way down to Mexico. Is or even like from Canada, three? even from Canada. Oh, Canada. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like 3000 miles. I read. Exactly. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. So we need to give them lots to eat uh, before they take off. Well, first of all, they need a lot to eat in order to lay their eggs and feed the caterpillar stage, make chrysalises and then hatch and then be ready for the long journey. So tell us what we can help them with in terms of what they eat. Well, a lot of people happily are, are rallying around this cause uh, and creating uh, way stations for the monarchs. So milkweed, is a fundamental plant for them. And, um, you know, it's prior to them taking off, but of course, all along the way, trying to create corridors for them where they can stop and rest and feed. Mm -hmm. So the Monarch Way Stations, I think people could get more information on, on those specifically, how they can register their either yard or their schoolyard yeah. habitat yeah. or their park, wherever they're making the way station. It's at monarchwatch.org, I believe. Yeah, that's a wonderful site. We're also partnered with a, a great organization called Monarch Joint Venture. There's many, many great resources. And then it's a great to become part of this community and track the migration, both south and north. And as you mentioned, just in your own backyard, you can do something. And then it's so gratifying to see the monarchs come to your, mm -hmm. your house and know that you're doing your part to help them. And if you really like doing citizen science, you can um, send your data, um, you, you know, you can say, here's the date when they first arrived. Exactly. Um, I, I guess you can send that to journeynorth.org and they map out all these occurrences, which is really exciting. It's really exciting. It's really important because mm -hmm. there, there's been a great decline over the last decade or so, some encouraging news from this past year, but you know that kind of citizen science reporting is vital so that can really have a sense of how they're doing and what we can do to, to step up our activism to help them. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned climate change. I guess they were worried about all that freezing in Texas last year and um, the droughts, I guess the droughts impact the wintering grounds, those trees, those special trees that the 
monarchs need, but also throughout the U.S. Absolutely. Of course, they need water as well. And yeah, the forest you mentioned, which is so beautifully illustrated by Marcos in the book, is mm -hmm. called Oyamel trees. So, the, uh, huh. so these beautiful, beautiful, it's almost like a pine tree. Hmm. Yeah. One thing I love about the book is the way it shows the excitement of the children down in Mexico, yeah. which is, you know, it just hadn't occurred to me because when I grew up in the U.S. and I've raised children, the excitement here is all I've seen. And uh -huh remembering or realizing that there's a whole other half of this creature's life cycle that children are excited about elsewhere and that we're in this together. It's really, the, the book ties that together. And, and then with the, you know, being bilingual book, yeah. I mean, it's really lovely how you did it. Well, thanks. I can't take credit for that. I mean, again, Marcos did that so beautifully. And I agree. I mean, there's a particular spread in the book where, it's the Rio Grande, so separating the U.S. from Mexico. And of course, butterflies don't see borders. They don't think in those types of political terms. They're just moving to their habitat as they have for countless generations. And there's a child on one side who's clearly like an American boy marveling at the journey of the butterfly. And right on the other side of the river, there's a little Mexican girl. And I find that just true statement of like this human response to these beautiful animals, whether they're in the States or Canada or Mexico, it's a universal appreciation, mm -hmm. very impactful in this moment where there's so much divisive political rhetoric to think about um, that we share the planet with one another and with these animals mm -hmm. and finding ways for common ground and appreciation, I think is a very important thing to, to focus on. And I love the way he brought that to life in the book. Yes, it all came together. It was very effective. Well, thank you. Well, I think we're out of time already, which I hate to say because this is such a great topic and so nice of you to spare your time to share with us. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's my pleasure. And thanks for all the great work you're doing. Look forward to seeing you next time we can get back to uh, your part of the world. We played the Ann Arbor Summer Music Festival oh. few, right before the pandemic. So hope to get yeah. back to Michigan sometime soon. Oh, how great. Yeah, yeah, that would be wonderful. For this and all our Green Room shows, you can watch them at washna.org forward slash Green Room. Thanks for joining us here in the Green Room.